Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Subaru XV Crosstrek Premium. Now in many ways this is very similar to the Subaru Impreza. Uh, the biggest difference as far as capability is concerned is that this has about 3 inches more ground clearance. Uh, 8.7 inches versus 5.7 on the base Impreza. Now some of the other differences include uh, that this has slightly wider tires, slightly larger brakes up front. It also weighs about 50 pounds heavier than the Sport Impreza that I tested previously and it also has slightly worse fuel economy. Under the hood is a 2 liter boxer 4 cylinder engine, dual overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder with variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust, compression ratio of 10.5 to 1. This engine produces 148 horsepower at 6200 rpm and 145 pound feet of torque at 4200 rpm. The Crosstrek Premium starts at 22,295 with the 5 speed manual transmission. As tested, we're looking at 26,140 as this has a couple packages including the special yellow paint and the CVT transmission. Now before we take it on a test drive, just checking out visibility, pretty much all around is really good. Out the front to the sides, looking out the rear and checking your blind spot, you've got great visibility all the way around, large front windshield, so visibility is a good story. Now as far as legroom, I've got plenty of legroom, my knees aren't coming into contact with anything, I'm about 6'1", where I have this adjusted I'm totally fine. The seats are a little bit wide, uh, but if you are of a normal BMI, then you probably fit just fine. And as far as functionality of the interior, everything very simple, straightforward, easy to use. You've got the three dial system for the air conditioning system, which I love. Uh, controls on your steering wheel, uh, power windows, power mirrors, everything like that. And a decent infotainment system, good touch screen on that. So as far as the interior, everything in here, very functional, very simple to use. So let's go ahead and start it up push button start and take it for a test drive. Now I haven't found it to feel all that different than the Impreza and that's kind of a good thing because you've raised it up and you'd think you'd kind of sacrifice some body roll, uh, some stability, things like that and it doesn't feel all that different. It still feels very much so car-like except now you have plenty of clearance uh, so you can take it off the beaten path and not really worry about what's underneath. You've got all-wheel drive, you know, no real need to worry about that. As far as the throttle pedal, uh, it is a little bit punchy so when you're first touching it you know it kind of jumps up in the revs and then after that it's a little bit more of an intuitive mapping where you kind of slowly gradually ease onto the throttle now if you do floor it it kind of kicks it up to around 3500 rpm and then it just slowly increases from there it doesn't get into the high rpms really quickly even though cvts could uh, and the acceleration overall isn't that thrilling uh, there's not really that much torque there you know plenty to merge on a highway and things like that but nothing excessive um, you're really going for fuel economy in this vehicle and you don't really have much power to play with. Now, speaking of fuel economy in this vehicle versus the Impreza, it's rated 26 in the city, 34 on the highway. So only one mile per gallon worse in the city and only two miles per gallon worse on the highway. So really you're not sacrificing all that much fuel economy. And in my own tests, actually this did the exact same, pretty much around 41 miles per gallon on my fuel economy course. So pretty great fuel economy considering that it's all wheel drive. Uh, this is at the top of the list if you're looking at other other crossovers out there for highway miles per gallon. Uh, other crossovers, I should mention, with all-wheel drive. So if you're looking for an efficient all-wheel drive crossover, this is at the top of the list as far as fuel economy. Now you do have paddle shifters, so this has a CVT and it allows you to manually select the gear ratios. Uh, and so, you know, similar to some of the other Subarus I've used, uh, the downshifting is fine, it's smooth, it's quick. Uh, the upshifting, if you're on the gas, you'll get a little bit of a forward jolt where it kind of sets you back in your seat very briefly in order to change the gear ratio. So downshifting smooth, upshifting not quite as smooth, a little bit of a jolt, but overall pretty good and definitely better than a lot of the automatic planetary gearboxes out there. Now taking this into the corners, I've actually been surprised uh, that there isn't more body roll. It actually doesn't roll all that much and the suspension itself isn't all that soft. You know, it's kind of in the middle as far as stiffness and so you don't have a ton of body roll. Like I was mentioning earlier, it behaves a lot more like a car than it does an SUV, uh, even though it's categorized as a small compact SUV. Now, part of the reason why this may seem to handle a bit more car-like uh, than SUV-like, it only weighs 50 pounds more than that Sport Impreza that I tested, and it's got 20 millimeter wider tires at all four corners. So, you know, a little bit better uh, improvement for the handling there as far as the width of the tires is concerned. And also another difference is that with the manual gear selection, 
It has slightly more aggressive gears uh, for all six, you know, preset gear ratios for the CVT to transition into versus the Impreza Sport. And so that can result in very similar acceleration for the Crosstrek versus the Impreza because the weights are so similar. The brake pedal feel is fairly firm, not a whole lot of travel for the distance that you'll be using, you know, for everyday driving in an emergency. You know, you've got a little bit more travel in there, but overall a decently firm pedal feel and pretty simple to adapt to. As far as the steering feel, somewhat in the middle as far as weight uh, and, you know, a pretty decently wide ratio. So you do turn the wheel a decent amount in order to turn the vehicle, uh, but it seems decently responsive. I don't have any complaints regarding the steering. Okay, let's get a quick highway pull in here. Come to a complete stop and then floor it and see what our 60 time is. Anticipating it not being that great, uh, it doesn't like to climb up into the high RPMs very quickly. 4,000 RPM, 5,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM, and then a little gear shift. So I've got the cruise control set at 65. You do have a decent amount of both wind and road noise. You're looking at about 77 decibels, which is exactly what I had in the Subaru Impreza. So no big difference there. Overall seems fine. You know, you could definitely have a conversation, anything like that. Uh, but it is a little bit noisier than some of the other interiors which I've been in. So overall, if you're looking for a crossover out there that gets solid miles per gallon, has plenty of clearance, and has all-wheel drive, uh, this is a great option out there for a pretty relatively low price. The other thing, I was recently reading this comparison that Motor Trend put on between this and a lot of the other crossovers out there, and according to them, the uh, depreciation of this Subaru is far less than a lot of the other models out there, so long term, this will save you money in depreciation. I think my biggest gripe with it would just be that ultimately it's just not that fun to drive. You know, it's a fine car, it's very practical, it does everything you need a car to do, uh, and the suspension actually seems fine for cornering, so cornering isn't all that bad. It's just somewhat lacking in power, uh, but it kind of makes up for that in fuel economy, so it's a very practical package, just not exactly thrilling. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.